Allah's taught us loyalty and service to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. From the story of Imam Hussain is the family of Umm al -Banin, being Umm al -Banin and her son of Abu Fullah Abbas alayhi salam. And as we are here in Karbala, the people of Karbala are commemorating, are dedicating this night and the, the, the preceding day uh, to Lady Umm al -Banin and her tragedy. As we know, she gave birth to Abu Fullah Abbas alayhi salam and uh, her other three sons with the intention that they would be there to serve Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. And just a very short poem from the voice of Umm al -Banin, from the perspective of Umm al -Banin, after the events of Karbala, she says, I wish they never called me Umm al -Banin. I raised five sons and not one would remain. Where are her sons? No Abbas and no Hussein, no Abdullah and no Ja'far, no Uthman, son of Haida. Not a son beside me, only memories. When I see my shadow, my eye Hussein sees. Let me see them just once before I die. Please, let me just once sit beside them. Let a mother see her children. Tell me how patient can a mother be? Umm al -Banin, the mother of four sons, and yet not a son with me. A mother without sons. What a tragedy, a tragedy drenched in my tears. And I live it for months and years. I see them coming to Medina. Just ahead, I see Zainab and Al-Kuthum. Just ahead, but Hussein has no body. Just ahead, and his body lies fallen in Karbala. I'm left complaining to no one and nobody. I cry out and comes to help me, nobody. I just see Hussein's head and nobody. They tell me my son's head was raised upon a spear. I walk to Karbala, me and the angels, side by side. When once it was me and my sons, Side by side, I saw the bodies. At one, I sat and I side beside the one whose flag would no longer flutter. I look around for my sons. I counted four. But when I looked back at Hussein, I couldn't remember what I counted for. So I made sure that my sons were all accounted for and that their blood flowed for the son of Fatima. And here's me, not struck by lightning, but by awe struck, thanking Allah that they were killed or cut. Or struck, I hold the flag of Abbas as I am left or struck, and I wear it as a hijab, as a proud mother, and I wear it as a hijab, as a proud mother. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Indeed, we can see such fascinating loyalty and complete servitude from Umm al Birin to Imam Hussein in the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a lesson that we see reflected today. Today, in the holy city of Karbala, when we go to the shrine of Imam Hussain, we see so many lovers coming forward and pledging their loyalty to Imam Hussain, pledging their loyalty to the grandson of the Prophet and by extension the Prophet himself. And today, inshallah, as we tackle the subject of Imam Hussain's journey from Medina to Karbala, and we tackle the understanding of who Imam Hussain Islam was and what his message really means to us in today's in today's world, the story that's over a thousand years old. Today, inshallah, we're going to be looking at the idea of loyalty and the rewards for loyalty. And inshallah, joining me to discuss this very important topic is Sayyid Ali Nawab. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Assalamu alaikum wa Thank you for joining me once again. So, when we speak about the idea of loyalty and specifically rewards for loyalty toward um, servitude of Allah and the Ahlul Bayt, how can, we, how can you contextualize this for us? What can you give us that can help us begin this journey toward understanding what loyalty toward the Ahlul Alim Salam is? Inshallah. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you, O oh dear visitors of Abi Abdullah al Hussein during these nights, wherever you may be, especially our dear viewers who've joined us and are joining us every night to be able to take a glimpse of what's going on in this holy month in the holy city of Karbala. Of course, when we speak about the topic uh, of reward, we have to also combine it with the topic of loyalty. Loyalty is something that everyone, wherever they may be, they practice. They are loyal to something or they are loyal, loyal to someone. And as a result of that, that loyalty, they, they naturally expect to receive something back either to benefit themselves financially or otherwise. When we come to speak about uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam, the progeny of the Holy Prophet, peace, be, peace and blessings be upon them all, they are Ahlul Bayt al-Karam. They are the family of uh, 
blessings. They are the family that without asking, they would give. And they would give with full hands. And that's financially, which was something very little that they can give away. But when it comes to having loyalty to an extent that you would sacrifice everything you have for the sake of Ahlul Bayt, then they would in return reward you with 10 times or 100 times more than what you have given. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expressed towards Abi Abdullah al Hussein. The fact that Abi Abdullah al Hussein was so loyal to his message and to the cause and the call of Ashura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return being the, the creator of all creations and being Akramul Akrameen, which we can't find anyone kinder than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, Allah gave everything to Abi Abdullah al Hussein. And when we say everything, we literally mean everything. Let me start with a very beautiful narration to enter upon this very beautiful discussion and inshallah as a conclusion for the topics we've been discussing these nights and tonight as a conclusion we will make a decision I myself, all the viewers, everyone who listens to these lectures we will make a decision first of all we have to make sure we know who we are loyal to and we know what rewards we are going to get and how these rewards are going to benefit us. Is it only a, a reward which is bound by time, only materialistic reward in this life and in the hereafter we don't receive anything? Or is it something that we aim to get when we cross over to the other life? Aban ibn Taghlub is one of the narrators of a hadith from Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam narrates from Abi Abdullah al Hussein, Salawatullahi wa Salamu alayhi, says, Man ahabbana kana minna ahl al bayt. Whomever loves us, ahl al bayt, he is one of us. And this is not something new. If we go back in time, we hear Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam saying, Salmanun minna ahl al bayt. Salman is one of us, ahl al bayt, alayhi wa salam. So Rasulullah is adding or making Salman join the immediate family. When we search about the lineage of Salman, Salman didn't have any connections. He didn't have any connections with Rasulullah in terms of lineage and family and ancestry. He was someone from Persia. He came over to Medina. He heard the message of Rasulullah and he became one of the uh, closest companions to the Holy Prophet. Hence, Rasulullah, because Salman was so loyal in his belief to the Holy Prophet and his family, especially Abi Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib, Abi Hassan alayhi salam, then he was titled as Minna Ahlul Bayt. And Rasulullah says, Sal say Salman al Muhammadi. I think, subhanAllah, that, that shows you, just, just to cut off very briefly, that shows you uh, about the loyalty. Uh, about the reason people are loyal today towards the Ahl Bayt, the, the reason people uh, they are inspired by these historical figures that were loyal towards the Ahl Bayt. And I just wanted to interrupt you very briefly just to let the viewers now uh, know as they can hear such loud processions going on here in Karbala behind us. If they're wondering what's going on, uh, there is a massive Iranian mokib uh, that is walking uh, around the shrines of Karbala and mashallah making and doing very loud lamentations. So they're almost accenting our show. Uh, alhamdulillah. So, and I apologize yeah. before everything if I had to raise my voice yeah. because yeah. the atmosphere and the sound is amazing. Yeah, it's fun, it's alhamdulillah. truly amazing. Yeah. It sometimes makes me cry. But please but continue. We continue, say, we continue. As I said, the narration says, Man ahabbana kana minna ahl al bayt. Now, this is a big thing when Imam Hussein says, for merely just for the reason of loving ahl al bayt, you show affection to Imam Hussein. You shed a tear for Abi Abdullah al Hussein to show your love to him for what he went through. You will be titled as Minna Ahlul Bayt. Salman was titled Salman al Muhammadi. And Salman reached a level in his love towards Ahlul Bayt salam, to an extent that, for example, on the day that they took Amir al Mu'mineen to the masjid to give bay'ah to the so called uh, ruler of the time. 
Fatima to Zahra went behind him to protect Imama when she raised her hands to do to do dua to pray if Allah could bring down his curse and adab upon these people for what they are doing to Amir al muminin Salman says and no, no other only Salman he says I noticed the walls of the masjid go up N no one else noticed that only Salman why Salman because he was so close to Ahlul Bayt and they rewarded him for his loyalty and faith and the struggles that he had to go through because of that love that he showed very obviously to Amir al-Mu'mineen and that was as a reward to him so man ahabbana kana minna ahl al-bayt Aban says I asked Imam Hussein faqultu minkum ahl al-bayt I am amazed oh Imam you say just for merely loving you they become part of you ahl al-bayt Imam says minna ahl al-bayt and Imam replies it three times minna ahl al-bayt Minna ahl al-bayt Minna ahl al-bayt Thumma qal And then he says Imam says to me Thumma qal Ama sami'ta qawla al-abd al-salih Have you not heard The statement of Abd al-salih Now one of the titles of Prophet Ibrahim In the Holy Quran He is al-abd al-salih In uh, Surah Ibrahim Verse 36 Prophet Ibrahim says Makes that statement فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي And whomever follows me, which means follows my cause, and whomever follows me is of me, is part of me. Prophet Ibrahim is saying, whoever follows me and my path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is part of me. So when Imam Hussain alayhi salam is from a family, upon which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on many occasions in the Holy Quran sent down verses describing their position. One of the beautiful verses that is attributed to Ahlul Bayt is a verse, verse number 23 in Surah Ashura, -Shu which, which says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى وَمَنْ يقترف حسنة نزد له فيها حسنا إن الله غفور شكور رسول الله is saying to the Arabs of Arabia say O Arabs say O رسول الله to the Arabs no reward do I ask of you for this this message the service that I am providing you except the love and affection of those near of kin my kinship my family O oh, Arabs O oh, people who have become Muslims I do not ask you for any reward I don't ask you for money I don't ask you for wealth for the service for the message for the fact that I have pulled you from the depth of the darkness into into the light I don't want any reward from you but I want only one thing the love and affection towards my family and my progeny. So, what does this mean? This means that the kinship of Rasulullah, which in this case, Imam Hussein is part of that kinship, is ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish a bond and connection to the Muslims, so they receive something as a result of that loyalty. Rasulullah is saying to the Arabs, I want you to be loyal. And that loyalty that you show my family will have positive results for you yourself. I, Rasulullah, will not receive anything as a result of your loyalty to Ahlul Bayt. You will benefit. How much do we benefit today? Would you think anyone living today would show loyalty, loyalty to anyone if they weren't going to receive anything, any rewards, anything back? The fact that we see thousands of pilgrims coming to Karbala year after year, Muharram, in Sha'ban, in Ramadan, in Arba'een, we see millions, more than 20 millions from all over the globe. They travel thousands of miles to come to Karbala. For what? To, to make a statement that we are following the message of Rasulullah. 
who was sent as a mercy to this nation. قل لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إلا المودة في القربة مودة. What does مودة mean? مودة if you want to describe مودة it doesn't mean only show love. Come to Imam Hussein and say, Oh Imam Hussein, I love you. مودة is a level higher than love. مودة is not حب. Allah used the word مودة in this verse. He did not use the word حب. Rasulullah said, he could have said, قل لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إلا الحب في القربة أو إلا الحب إلا القربة. No, Rasulullah said مودة. Actually, physically show the love. It's not only words by mouth. Say just a quick question. Um, and of course, as the viewers can hear, mashallah, the processions are, are passing us and getting louder and louder. So forgive us, forgive us, like the Sayyid said, if we have to raise our voices, if maybe you can't hear us properly. But subhanAllah, the atmosphere in Karbala is absolutely amazing with so many more kids coming past and professing their love and their loyalty to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Sayyid, you mentioned the, the, the verse of the Quran where uh, the Prophet asked nothing but a mere uh, but love for his dear relatives. Some uh, are, are Muslims of other schools of thought argue that here he's saying you should show uh, I don't want any reward from you except for you to show love toward your near relatives. How do we respond to this? Sorry, I I had the uh, was I, I couldn't hear the question. Could you repeat it? Yeah, sure. Sorry. So I'm saying that in the verse of the Quran that you just mentioned, where the yes. Holy Prophet uh, says, "I ask nothing more than a, uh, uh, love for my near relatives." Yes. yes. Some. Uh, other Muslims and other schools of thought argue that here he is asking people to have love for their near relatives. So how do we respond to this? What's our, what's our view on this? As I said, Rasulullah is, is asking something and that something is not a reward, a physical reward to Rasulullah sallallahu because Rasulullah is not going to benefit anything. Rasulullah is just a messenger. He's, he's done what he has to do and then he moved on. And this reward is, as, as the Holy Prophet says, uh, it's for your guidance, for your benefit. You will benefit in this life and you will benefit in the hereafter. So anyone, not only Muslims, not only Muslims, if they show love and loyalty to Ahl al-Bayt they will see the immediate effects in this life. And I, I, I dare them to try. You the viewer, if you are not a Muslim, you don't follow Islam. You've heard of a character called Hussein. Or you've heard someone called Abel Fadl al-Abbas. And this person was a loyal person. He, he was a, a compassionate person. He had uh, morals. L love them, read about them, and show affections to them. Feel sorry for what they went through. Because for what Abi Abdullah al Hussein had to go through, no other human being on the face of this earth, from the beginning until the end, would have gone through what Abi Abdullah al Hussein went through. If we speak from the point of view of humanity, from a point of view of humanity, humanitarian aspect, Abi Abdullah al Hussein had to go through troubles and problems resulting in the, in the slaughter of his six month old baby on his arms. Why? Because he was asking for water. Because that child had not drunk water for three days. Now, do we not have any um, charitable organizations asking for people to donate for the people of some parts of Africa who are dying as a result of the drought? Abi Abdullah al Hussein done the same thing. What Abi Abdullah al Hussein was saying, just give him, if you think that I am going to drink the water, take the child and you feed the Subhanallah, water. today, said on the way to the channel, I was uh, walking down this road of Al Fala Abbas Islam. And I noticed uh, where the water uh, was, there was a cat and it was running around between uh, the canisters and kept trying to poke its head inside looking for water. And it, my heart just broke and I came towards it. The cat started like screaming as if to tell me, give me water, give me water. And I tried to, 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 to pour it and the cat uh, kind of ran away. Um, but <laughs> sub SubhanAllah, I, 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 was, I, was, I was thinking to myself, I was like, I couldn't bear just to see this cat this street cat and this is thirsty. just a normal and, animal and they and they left the grandson of the prophet and his whole family uh, to be thirsty for three days that's, that's, amazing. that's the kind of hustle they it's had. amazing brother nuri if you just for merely if you just walk around the streets of karbala just looking at and feeling the atmosphere and feeling the heat in the afternoon you will it's enough for you just that is masai for you it's enough for you just to look at the situation and compare it to how it was on the day of ashura it's enough for you to cry 
One of the brothers today was saying, Sayyid, we went out at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And he said, Sayyid, I can't bear the heat. It's as if fire is being pushed into my face. I can't even walk barefoot on the ground, on the earth. I said to him, I am trying to imagine this. If I brought my three-year-old daughter, I have my three-year-old daughter. How would I feel if my three-year-old daughter would walk barefoot on the, on the tarmac? So try and imagine how, what these three-year-olds, four-year-olds, daughters and sons of the, of the companions and of the family of Abi Abdullah Hussein had to go through on the plains of Karbala on the afternoon of the day of Ashura. And that made me cry. I literally cried just trying to imagine my three-year-old daughter if I brought her from London to Karbala and made her to walk in the heat of the afternoon just, just to feel the heat of the earth. It would, it would make me get shattered. And this is enough for the free people of the world. I know we've gone off topic, but I just want to make that statement. Oh, people of the world, study the story of Hussein. And for what he had to go through, regardless of, oh, of he, if he was on the right path and the army of, of Yazid, they were on the right path or the wrong path. Just for what his family had to go through. No water for three days. The children, starvation, the heat. That's enough for you to come and say that this man died as a martyr, as a shaheed. Continuing to our discussion. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Just to show, just to teach the people of Medina at that time. Specifically and as a whole to the people of the world. Rasulullah made many statements regarding Abi Abdullah al Hussein. One of them, which gets repeated year by year, is that Husaynun minni wa ana min Hussein. Ahabba Allah man ahabba Husaynun. Hussein is of me, Hussein is part of me, and I am part of Hussein. Allah loves the one that loves Hussein. What else do we want? What else do we look for? For the, Rasul, for the Messenger to be pleased with us. And when Rasulullah is pleased with us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator, our God, is going to be pleased with us. Our brothers, the Christians, they go to church and they beg from Prophet Isa and, and Lady Mary and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them, to cure them, to protect them. Why? Because they love these characters. And there are other people from other walks of life, from other schools and religions. They speak to their leaders. They, they ask something in return for the loyalty that they have. And we are loyal to these individuals who sacrifice their life for the sake of Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. I've brought these narrations so our dear viewers can understand what rewards they are going to get as a result of their loyalty to Abi Abdullah al Hussein? Sometimes we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, we are not worshipping you for a reward, for a return. Because we, we are worshipping because uh, we found you. وَجَدْتُكَ أَهْلًا لِلْعِبَادِهِ Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam says, Ya Allah, Ya Rabb al Alameen, I did not worship you tama'an fi jannatik. I'm not worshiping you because I want to enter your paradise. And as a fear of your hellfire. But You are worthy of worship. Because the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the intention to worship him because he is our creator. He's blessed us. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says Man ahabba al hasana wal Hussein. Because Hassan and Hussein, Imaman. Al Hassan and Hussein, Sayyida Shababi Ahl al Jannah. They are leaders. They are associated with the youth of the paradise. Man ahabba al hasana wal Hussein. Ahbabituhu. I, the one who is a sign of mercy, of Allah's mercy on the face of this earth, I will love them back. And, and just try to imagine. What effects will the love of Rasulullah have on us? Sometimes we are happy, we are pleased that our parents show that love that we show them. We will be pleased 
if our friends say I love you. We are pleased if people in the community say we respect you for the love that you show us. We will be happy because the community is showing something back. But this is someone who the whole of the creation was built, was created for him. من أحب الحسن والحسين أحببته ومن أحببته and the one that I love for his love to Hassan and Hussein أحبه الله الله will love them back ومن أحبه الله and whomever Allah loves أدخله الجنة what else do we need Allah will reward you with paradise وما أدراك ما الجنة فيها ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر The paradise that we long to go and to enter inshallah in the hereafter There are things in the paradise that no one would ever imagine what Allah has created as a reward for his ibad, for his servants for the loyalty that they show towards this family Surat Maryam. These are verses and ahadith. I want you, brothers and sisters, to write down so you can go back to. Surat Maryam, chapter Maryam, verse 96. In Alladina Amanu, wa Amilu Salihat, Sayajal, Lahum, Rahmanu, Widda. Again, Allah uses the word, the phrase wood, to physically show love and affection. To whom? Allah in this verse says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They believe, they have faith. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Abi Abdullah al-Hussein and his companions, did they not carry that iman? Did they not do a salihat? One of the manifestations of salihat is the fact that they went to Karbala and they sacrificed their lives to save other people from entering the hellfire. As-salihat is something that you do, which is recorded for you. In the hereafter, you will get the reward. Al-ladhina amanu, Abi Abdullah al-Hussein and his companions. Wa'amilu as-salihat, they went to Karbala. Sayaj'al lahum al-rahmanu widda. Allah is going to reward them. With what? With that love and affection. What love and affection? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, Inna... لقتل الحسين لحرارة في قلوب المؤمنين لا تبرد أبدا That is the love that Allah is going to reward Abi Abdullah al-Hussein and his companions is that he's created these processions He's created thousands of mu'mineen and mu'minat men and women in this late time of the night nearly 2 a.m. Karbala time in the middle of the night what are they doing? Why have they left their sleep, the comforts of their beds, the comforts of their houses? Why? What's been happening? What has made them come out in the streets? Are you not amazed that me and Brother Nuri and Sayyid Ali are sitting here 2 a.m. in the morning and we see this, this noise of processions? This shows the love. The love for whom? For someone who sacrificed his, the blood of his heart for the sake of saving us, me and you and the rest of the mu'mineen to enter, to enter the paradise. I mean, even today when I was uh, standing outside, today is of course uh, the eve of Friday. Uh, and as we know, there's a time when ziyar is recommended. And in all the streets that are coming towards Karbala, you just see hundreds and hundreds of, of people, local people, flocking toward the shrine. And almost as if the shrine itself is a magnet for them. You know, it's, it's, uh, today is the, the equivalent of Friday night for Iraqis. They could be doing anything, anything tonight. They could do anything they want, and they choose to come and visit Imam Hussain, which shows you just how beautiful the love is and how s strong and impactful and how, uh, how much of a magnet he is and how strong the loyalty toward Imam Hussain is you from these speaking. lovers. You are speaking now, and these people are lamenting and beating their chests and crying for the sorrows of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, and this itself is drawing tears to my eyes. Let me narrate you a beautiful narration from Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. 
the grandson of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Inni, Imam al Baqarah is saying to us, Inni la alam, I recognize, in hadha al hub, the love, the mawadda, the affection, alladhi tuhibbunana bihi, that you carry for us in your hearts. Laysa bi shay'in sana'tumuh. It's not something that you have made. It's not man-made. That's love and affection. Sometimes you carry love and affection, which has been made as a result of, of your love and affection of someone else. It's man-made love. It enters your heart because you love someone else. Right? Now here, Imam al-Baqir says, Inni la'alam, I recognize. Anna hadha al-hub, that love, that these thousands and millions of people all over the globe, today, wearing black, Lamenting and crying for Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, that is love, that is mawadda. Inni la alam inna hadha al-hub alladhi tuhibbunana bihi, that you carry and you love us because of that. Laysa bi shay'in sana'tumuh, it's not man-made. Walakin Allah sana'ahu, it's amazing Nuri. Allah sana'a hadha al-hub, Allah created that hub that is in our hearts. Today, if you are a lover of Abi Abdullah al Hussein and you show affection to Abi Abdullah al Hussein, you go to the majalis of Imam Hussein, you cry for Imam Hussein, you lament for Imam Hussein, you write documents and articles for Imam Hussein, you write poetry, you recite poetry, you cause people to cry for Abi Abdullah al Hussein, and that shows the love that you have for Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Know that, that that love is there because Allah wanted that love to be in your heart. And that love is not given to anyone. Only the special people who have the ability to carry that love, Allah rewards them. That's why you see some people are Muslims. They say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. They say, Ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. But they do not cry for his grandson, Abi Abdullah al Hussein. The companions of Umar ibn Sa'ad, the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad, they were not normal. Laymen, they were a'immatul, if you go and read the narrations, they, they had amongst them a'immatul jawami', which means they, they led the prayers in the mosques of Kufa. They had people who had memorized the Quran on the, on the night of Ashura. Some people in the camp of, camp of Umar ibn Sa'ad, they recited the whole of the Quran. There were people who were people of fatwa, they were ulama. But what help did that provide them? If they are reciting the Holy Quran, which in the same Quran says, the Holy Prophet says, Inni la as'alukum alayhi ajran illa al mawaddata fil qurba. Umm Salama, the wife of the Holy Prophet, says, Ya Rasulallah, am I one of those qurba? In the event of Hadith al Kisa, Umm Salama was present. She observed Fatima going under the cloak. Hassan and Hussein, Amir al Mu'mineen, Umm Salama, the wife, the noble wife of Rasulullah. She is counted as one of the wives. And this is a message to those who say that the wives of the Prophets are part of the Ahlul Bayt. And that, and that ayah is mentioning Ahlul Bayt as to be the wives of the Holy Prophet, not Ashab al Kisa. I tell you, Umm Salama, it is narrated. She says to the Holy Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, Am I part of that Ahlul Bayt, the Qurba? Rasulullah says, La wala kinnaki ala khair. Do not worry. You are not part of the Qurba, but you are going to be fine. She is the wife of the Holy Prophet. Why didn't the Prophet join her, add her? The Holy Prophet adds Jibra'il. Jibra'il comes down and says, Ya Rasulullah, ata'dhan li and adkhula ma'ahum tahta al kisa rasulullah says na'am adhintu lak jibrail enters the wife of the holy prophet she doesn't what does that show to us these people these people are special so walakin allah sana'ahu and this hadith from imam sajjad tonight i've i've, I've jam packed my topic to bring you riwayat to show you the rewards of the loyalty that we show are we loyal to abi abdullah al-hussein 
or God forbid, are we loyal to Yazid ibn Muawiyah? There are people until today, 2018, they have the sources in front of them. They can read. They go and they praise Yazid and they say Yazid is Amir al Mu'mineen and what he done to Abi Abdullah al Hussein was right. And they also say Imam Hussein was wrong to rise up against Yazid. They praise him for, for being the cause of the death of the grandson of the Holy Prophet in that brutal way. Qal al Imam Zayn al Abideen, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam says in his lecture. In his sermon in the courtyard of Yazid, when he went up the pulpit, he said, We Ahlul Bayt, we have been granted some aspects. One of them is Our love is in the hearts of who? Everyone? No. Al Mu'mineen. Anil Imam al Sadiq, again. Man arad Allah bihi al khair. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the good for someone. What else can I say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your creator, if he wants you to go towards the right path, he will throw in, inside your heart the love of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. And I think subhanAllah said that when we see that anyone who has the true, sincere love of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, that in itself makes him in his life a companion of haq, a companion of justice that makes sure that he stands up whenever he sees wrong, whenever he sees injustice because he learns it all from Imam Hussain and so you can see how it's all connected uh, and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards such people with the love of Imam Hussain and that's sure, how powerful the love is I'm not sure how much time we have left but there are other narrations inshallah I will uh, try and mention them and you can remind me of the time inshallah as I said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says inna li qatlil Hussain حرارة في قلوب المؤمنين لا تبرد أبدا The death of Hussein The martyrdom of Abi Abdullah al-Hussein In that tragic way Has left a fire, a flame In the hearts of the believers That will never Distinguish Will never distinguish This is what this is something that the Holy Prophet said about Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Inna liqatl al Hussein, harar fi qulub who in the hearts of who the mu'minin la tabrudu abada. However much the enemies of Ahl al Bayt, those who carry hatred in their hearts against Ahl al Bayt, try their best. If all the corrupt governments and nations of the world come and stand against. The lovers of Ahlul Bayt, the believers who carry that heat inside their hearts, to stop them and to, pro to refrain them from participating in the procession and the lamentation and the mourning of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, they will never be able to do so. And that is a promise from Rasulullah. Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, he himself says, Man ahabbana Ahl al Bayt. Bikalbihi, if anyone loves us inside his heart. Wajahada ma'ana bilisanihi wa yadih. And he goes to jihad either on the battlefield or by publicizing his love and by speaking about our love. That's an, a, a part of jihad as well. Wajahada ma'ana bilisanihi, spoken wise, wa yadihi. Providing books, providing literatures, um, providing financial help to institutes and organizations. Man ahabbana ahl al bayt bi qalbihi wa jahada ma'ana bi lisanihi wa yadihi fa huwa ma'ana fi al jannati fi al rafiq al a'la. He is with us in the highest levels of the paradise. Okay. Next par paragraph. Wa man ahabbana bi qalbihi. Again, whoever loves us in, the, in his heart. He was a cause of help. He, anyone that he met, he spoke to them about Abi Abdullah al Hussein. He encouraged them to come and visit Abi Abdullah al Hussein. He narrated, he narrated the narrations of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. That is a part of jihad. Wajahada ma'ana bilisane. 
أن يجاهد معنا بيده. Physically he was not able to do so. The previous part was that he was able to do physical work. But this one is that he is not able to do physical um, work for the sake of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. فهو معنا في الجنة دون تلك. One level lower than the, the first level. Okay. The next point in the same narration. ومن أحبنا بقلبه. Again, that person carries the love and affection and mawadda for Ahlul Bayt in his heart. وضعف. This time, he, he can't do jihad neither with his tongue because the, in the society, the place that he is living in refrains him. It's dangerous for him to speak about Ahlul Bayt. It's amazing that there are some areas not in Karbala, maybe, not in other parts of Iraq, but in some parts of, of Asia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and other parts of the Islamic world. You are not able to speak about the Fada'il of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wasalam. They will come and explode you. They will come and behead you. They will come and open gunfire on you and they will kill you. And subhanAllah Sayyid, I think that you speak about um, you know, people who get killed for just loving Imam Hussein and it's such a mirror of how Imam Hussein himself uh, was killed in his time and the fact that his sons and his lovers today are also being killed. We have about 10 minutes left and perhaps you want to finish the narration and then lead into um, some Musaib in honor of the tragedy of Imam Hussein. وَمَنْ أَحَبَّنَا بِقَلْبِهِ وَضَعُفَ أَنْ يُجَاهِدَ مَعَنَا بِلِسَانِهِ وَيَدِهِ فَهُوَ مَعَنَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ He is also with us. This is the mercy of Ahlul Bayt. This is the kindness of Ahlul Bayt. And this is the reward Allah has given Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam That anyone that loves you will also go to the paradise. Even if he doesn't speak about your love. Then, وَمَنْ أَبْغَذَنَا And the one that carries the hatred of Ahlul Bayt in his heart. What is his reward? Tonight, we are speaking about the rewards of loyalty. There are people who are loyal to the wrong people. وَمَنْ أَبْغَضَنَا بِقَلْبِهِ وَلِسَانِهِ وَكَفَّ عَنَّا يَدَهُ فَهُوَ فِي النَّارِ فَوْقَ ذَلِكَ He will face eternal life in the hellfire. I would like to end before I go to the Masaib with the story of people that used to live amongst us. How much love they carried for Ahlul Bayt and what position they were rewarded. Ayatollah al-Udma, al-Sayyid al-Mar'ashi al-Najafi, one of the high-ranked scholars of Tashayyu'. When he passed away, they noticed in his will he has mentioned some points. Some of the points I mentioned to show how much love and affection he had carried. He had mentioned in his will to his students, whatever you can do, practice these three things. So Allah helps you in your life. One of them is that Kun Dawman Ala Tahara. This is a high rank scholar, Ayatullah, saying to his students, Kun Dawman Ala Tahara. Be always in a purified status, right? And also have Wudu. Kun Dawman Ala Wudu. Why? Fainahu Yunirul Qalb. It will open up your heart to do good. وَيُزِيلُ الْهَمْ If you face problems and troubles in your life. This is one of the things, one of the ways you can cure yourself. Always be pure. Wear pure clothing away from dirt and najasat. And also have ablution. This is physically. And internally always make sure that you are clean inside as well. One of the ways that we can show our loyalty to Abi Abdullah al Hussein, not only in these nights. Because some people only show their love and affection to Abi Abdullah during these 10 nights and then the after 10 nights they go back to how they were before. This is a message to me and our dear viewers. You're wearing black today because you love Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Don't do something after the 10 days that makes Abi Abdullah al Hussein shed tears as a result of your mistakes. The second, if you see someone being taken to the graveyard, Participate in their funeral. And the third and the most important one, Sharik fi qadiyyatil Imam al Hussein. Anything, anything that has anything to do with Abi Abdullah al Hussein, join in. Join in. 
because that will leave its marks in your life. Ayatollah Mar Ashin Najafi had written in his will, when I pass away, I had a piece of black clothing that I used to wear in the Masaib and the Aza of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Bury that with me. I had some pieces of tissue, a cloth, like the one I am holding. I have specifically designated this cloth. I carry it with me and I use it for the Masaib. When I cry for Abi Abdullah al Hussein, I wipe my tears. Where have I got this from? From our ulama. Ayatollah al Mar'ash al Najafi, he himself, he had a piece of cloth that he only used to wipe away the tears for Abi Abdullah al Hussein. He had mentioned in his will, bury that piece of cloth with me in my grave. Why? Because on the day of judgment or in Qabr, when Munkar and Nakir are going to ask me, who am I and where I am from, I will show my identity. And I will tell them, this piece of cloth carries what I am. Tonight, the manifestation of love and affection, which was embedded in a figure that time will remember years and years and years until the judgment day. A noble figure, which if you think today, in today's senses, I, I have difficulty finding if there may be individuals, a mother that brings, gives birth to children and raises them to be grown men and sends them to be sacrificed for the sake of a cause. The, the mother always loves her children and protects them from any harm. But there was one lady that history speaks about. And that lady is Fatima bint Hazam al-Kilabi. Umm al -Bani. Why do they call her Umm al -Bani? Because she got married to Amir al muminin for one cause and one cause only. Amir al muminin says to his brother, Aqeel, Aqeel, ikhtibli imra'atan awladatha al-fuhulatu min al-Arab. Why, O oh, Amir al muminin Li talida li waladan يكون عونا لأخيه الحسين يوم لا ناصر له ولا معين أو أقيل find me a wife a noble lady coming from a noble family to give birth for me to a son that he grows up and becomes a support a backbone to his brother Hussein on the day of Ashura where there will be no one to support him Umm al-Banin did just that. On the wedding night, her family brought her to the house of Amir al muminin She said, my family, don't go. Wait, I have one request. What is it, O Fatima? I want to go inside. I want to ask Hassan and Hussein if they accept me as a maid. Who am I to replace Fatima al Zahra? She came inside. She said, Hassan, Hussein, I am not here to replace the position of your mother, Fatima. They said, Ya Fatima, we will put you on our heads. She got married after a couple of days. She took Amir al Mumini to one side. She said, Ya Ali, I have one request. What is it, O oh Fatima? Tell me. She said, Ya Amir al muminin every time you call me Fatima, I see Hassan and Hussein start crying. Why? Because they remember their mother Fatima and what she went through. Don't call me Fatima anymore. Amir al muminin from that day onwards, started calling her Umm al -Banin because she was truly the mother of the sons. She brought for Abi Abdullah al Hussein for brave young men who stood on the plains of Karbala and they sacrificed their life for Abi Abdullah al Hussein. The day that the caravan of Imam Zainul Abideen came back to Medina, after that long journey, that sorrowful journey of captivity from Karbala to Sham, they came back to Medina. Imam Zainul Abideen says, Ya Bashir, one of the companions of Ahlul Bayt, 
Can you recite poetry? Bashir says, Yes, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, I can. He said, Idhab ila al-Madina, adkhul al-Madina. Rip your clothes, shed some tears, and make sure the people of Medina hear this message. What message is that, Ya Ibn Rasulullah? Idkhul al-Madina wa na'al Hussain. Enter the city of Medina and lament Hussain. Bashir says, I came inside the city of Medina. I took off my turban. I ripped my clothes. I said, Ya Ahl Yathrib. لا مقام لكم بها ما الخبر؟ What is wrong, O Bashir? They know him. He is a companion of the Holy Prophet. His father used to be the companion of the Holy Prophet. الخبر عند قبر رسول الله. Everyone came out. No one stayed indoors. It was a day as if it, the, the Holy Prophet had passed away. Everyone came, congregated around the shrine of رسول الله. أخبرنا يا بش. What is wrong? قتل الحسين فأجمع مدرار. الرأس منه على القناة والجسم منه على الثرى يا, يا, يا أهل يا ثرب لا مقام لكم بها قتل الحسين فأجمع مدرار الجسم منه بكربلاء مضرج والرأس منه على القناة Yudaru. Bishr says, I noticed from behind the crowds, one tall and handsome lady came. She said, open the way for me. She stood by Bishr. She says, she asked, he says, she asked me, Anta na'i reyhanat Rasulillah. Are you the one that is mourning the reyhan, the beloved part of Rasulillah? Bishr says, says, نعم أنا الناعي. She say, he says, she asked me, أخبرني عن ولد الحسين. He says, I am saying to people, قتل الحسين. She is ask, she is asking me, tell me about Hussein. She says, he says, I asked people, tell me who is this lady. They told him, this is أم البنين, أم العباس وإخوته. It is then that I realized that she has lost four sons. I started with saying. عظم الله لك الأجر يا أم البنين بأولادك until I reached عظم الله لك الأجر بولدك يا بن فضل العباس narrate is narrate that she was carrying a little child that little child fell to the ground she said لقد قطعت نياط قلبي you have ripped my heart into pieces أخبرني عن الحسين he says it was then that I said يا أم البنين عظم الله لك الأجر بأبي عبد الله فهذا رأسه يدار من من بلد إلى بلد. She started screaming. وولدا وحسينا. How did Lady Zainab receive أم البنين? Upon seeing أم البنين, Lady Zainab shouted, وأخا أم البنين شاوتد وولدا وحسينا لا تدعوني ويك أم البنين تذكريني باليوث العرين كانت بنون لي أدعى بهم واليوم أمسيت ولا من بنين Peace and blessings be upon you Oh, Abdullah Hussein, we'd like to thank Sayyid Ali Nawab for that very insightful, very inspiring, very emotional uh, segment. And inshallah, we shall be joined by Sayyid Ali Hakim after the break, who will be reciting some lamentations for us, inshallah. We'll see you then. Assalamu alaikum, jami'an, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon you, Umm al and peace and blessings be upon Abdullah Hussein. I think one of the greatest um, aspects of the life of Umm al uh, is knowing and that they say uh, according to some narrations that she was is almost the mother of Majalis in honor of Muhammad Sayyid Alayhi Salaam after the events of Karbala and according to narrations that say that she was still alive she would go to 
uh, Janet al baqiya which is the, the famous graveyard in Medina. She would make some makeshift um, uh, shrines to represent her children, and I believe Imam Hussain alayhi salam as well, and she would sit there and lament and recite Musaib and recite poetry in honor of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And this is an institution that she built that has carried on till today. Whenever you go to a majlis in mourning of Imam Hussain, whenever the reciter gets up and recites poetry, whenever the speaker ends his uh, lecture and poetry, know that this is almost all from Lady Umm al -Bin. So we send our salutations to her. And as we know very well that she is a door to our wishes, uh, it's very, very well known, uh, especially among certain communities, that uh, whenever you're in need, whenever you have a wish, uh, one, of the greatest, one of the greatest things you can do is raise your hands uh, to Umm al -Banin and ask Umm al -Banin to help. So inshallah we pray uh, through the wasilat of Umm al -Banin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes all our tribulations, answers our wishes and forgives all of our sins for me, myself, uh, my guests, uh, all of those in Karbala and all of you watching and your families as well inshallah. <laughs>